Hello, my AP Calc AB friends. Mr. Record here. Going to take a look at the opening activity for topic 8.2, which is a bit of a connection back to our good friends position, velocity, and acceleration. Sometimes we call these PVA. The only difference that you're going to notice throughout this particular unit or this particular topic in unit 8 is the fact that we will invoke a little bit of anti-differentiation or integration into some of our solutions. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go after that pizza. That looks good. We're going to take a look at an activity that will help you understand a couple of very fundamental principles. Now, again, many of you might recall having talked about position, velocity, and acceleration. It actually is in topic 4.6 of the CED. Uh, it's likely that you certainly talked about this in the first semester of your course. And one of the things that I want you to remember is that in our study of particle motion, a particle moves along a horizontal line typically on the AP exam. Sometimes we can have things move on a vertical line that will not be affected by gravity though. And we would call the position sometimes S of T, maybe sometimes X of T uh, if we choose to do so. But the velocity is typically V of T and the acceleration's A of T. Won't talk too much about velocity or acceleration in this activity, but let's see if this makes sense. Your teacher, when you could pretend right now that I'm your teacher, moves along a straight line at the front of the classroom, according to the values in this table. Time is measured in seconds, and x of t is measured in carpet squares, because that's what I have to use in my classroom. If you're a teacher from another school, maybe you have a tiled floor. You could use the idea of tiled squares. You could also just lay out some little tick marks along the floor uh, using some masking tape, and that would work as well. But I would tell my students at time zero, I'm going to be at the second carpet square over from the middle of the room. At time one, I will be at the negative two carpet square. That's two left from the middle. And etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I will ask students to compute how far was the teacher's ending position from the starting position from time zero to time four. And then I would ask the students what was the total distance that the teacher travel. So lots of really cool things happening. So I'm going to start and I'm going to put me right here. I'm going to say that that seam, and I and I, when I say carpet square, I'm always talking about being on a seam, otherwise it's kind of a little confusing for students. But I'm going to call that uh, uh, the seam uh, for the position one. Now, if I were to go into motion, I want you to keep track of your answers for both one and two to the best of your ability. Are you ready? This is going to be fun. So here I go. Since I can't move around my room, I'm just going to move this guy. So at time zero, he's going to start right there. All right. Hey, I'll even help you out, right? Time zero. This is square number two. All right. Ready? After one second. I find myself over here. All right, I'm going to keep going. At two seconds, I find myself here. And then at three seconds, I'm right back here. And then finally, at four seconds, where am I? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, I just made it. Probably see why I had to put zero so far over. So, yep, right there at t equal four, t equal four, I am at square eighteen. So, the first question How far was your teacher's ending position from the starting position? Well, if you take the starting position 2, the ending position 18, and you find out how far is it from there to there, the answer is simply 16 squares. And you can get that by simply subtracting 18 minus 2. But it's part 2 that's a little bit trickier, because that answer is not 16. In order to compute that, you have to really keep track of your running total and 
there's a mathematical way that you could consider your motion we'll talk about. But at first, we moved all the way over to here, which was four units. And then we moved two units here to two units there. And then I think we moved our 16, right? Which I've already got written up above, but you get the idea. And so if we add two plus two plus four, that would be eight. Eight plus 16 is 24, right? 24 squares. And that is the answer. Now the key to this is to understand that the two values that you had moved uh, when you were, or the one value I should say that you had moved going left looked like it was a negative four because you had moved this direction. In fact, it was really about the only time in this problem that we were moving to the left. Well, we have to consider that as an absolute value in order to compute problem two. And basically because in problem one, we were thinking of four as being negative and not considering it's moving back as positive four, that is why we are eight apart. Now, that's not so much important as what I'm going to address right now, and that is we need to understand what these two concepts are. And number two is pretty clear, distance. But number one is a different word that starts with the letter D. Maybe you know it. Oh, I think I heard you say it. Displacement. Good job. So you've got displacement and distance. And you really want to make sure that you have a handle on both of those. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of a hint, something that can help you immensely on the AP exam. Displacement is what happens when you integrate your velocity. But distance is what happens when you integrate the absolute value of velocity. And note, each one has some kind of boundary. Be, be really strong with those concepts, and you're probably looking at scoring an easy couple of points on a free response. Hope this helps. If you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for some more videos about this really important topic in 8.2. We'll see you next time.